what a big room this is. I walked in here, I said, wow, what a big room. <laughs> Chances are you've seen a comedian you love sitting down with a top political figure or cracking political jokes in the past year or so. And with the US election around the corner, there is more at play than just laughs. So in this video, we'll uncover the hidden links between comedy and politics, how comedy is influencing politics in ways people don't realize, and how comedians plan to use politics for their own benefit. So stick around until the end to find out exactly why comedians' influence on politics is growing faster than ever. We're rolling. Good to see Let's you. Go. There we go. <laughs> Some comedians believe it's their duty to push boundaries and divide crowds. I love being able to say anything I want. Mm -hmm. I had to learn to stop caring about people not yeah. laughing. Because the, the idea of comedy, really, is not everybody should be laughing. Right. It should be about 50 people laughing and 50 people horrified. Right. <laughs> Others believe comedy is a unique way to break social barriers and start conversations around difficult topics in society. I was leaving and I was sitting in the hotel and a voice said to me, he said, look around, what do you see? And I said, I see all colors of people doing everything, you know? And the voice said, do you see any and no. I said, you know why? Because there aren't any. And it hit me like a shot, man. I started crying and shit. I was sitting there and I said, yeah, I've been here three weeks. I haven't even said it. I haven't even thought it. And it made me say, oh my God, I've been wrong. The great comics of the past did exactly that. They made your parents do much more than just laugh. They made them question societal norms and how the whole system worked. Forget the politicians. The politicians are put there to give you the idea that you have freedom of choice. You don't. You have no choice. You have owners. They own you. They own everything. They own all the important land. They own and control the corporations. They've long since bought and paid for the Senate, the Congress, the state houses, the city halls. They got the judges in their back pockets. And they own all the big media companies, so they control just about all of the news and information you get to hear. They got you by the balls. And there is actually a scientific reason why comedians doing this is so effective. One study found that humor increases your attention because you have to follow the joke, and once you understand it, you're more likely to find the information memorable. Can we admit that Trump was funny? <laughs> Can we finally admit that he was funny? Well, hold on. I don't, I don't like the tone of that. That's not what I'm going for here. Yeah. The great leader. <laughs> no. He was funny. Now, whether or not that's a great quality, the commander in chief, <laughs> that's definitely up for debate. But he was funny. I saw it. Another study from the University of Pennsylvania and The Ohio State University found that in comparison to non-humorous clips, clips that contain humor were more likely to be shared and remembered for a much longer time. During Hurricane Dorian, he was like, maybe we should nuke it. <laughs> like, that was... That was a real suggestion from the president. The president said that. The president of the United States. He was like, hey, we got a big storm coming. You guys want me to blow it up? I was like, no, what the fuck are you talking about? I don't know, I fuck around, dude. So could all of the comedians who are using political satire to challenge societal norms actually be affecting elections and benefiting from it all at the same time? Comedians have massive followings and garner millions of views from subgroups of the population that politicians can't reach on their own. Since the last election, there are many 18 to 22 year olds who weren't old enough to vote last time and don't really care about politics, but by seeing Trump in a positive light on a podcast or in a comedy sketch, they may just go ahead and vote for him. So whether a comedian starts to agree with a politician or starts to question some things, it can make their audience's minds follow and start questioning things too. And I like to find out where their line may be and deliberately cross it, disturb them a little, make them uncomfortable, yeah. and then make them, and then bring them with me across the line and make yeah. them glad they came. That's what I do. I'm an entertainer. I'm not a doomsayer. I'm not here to preach. I don't do political tracts, but I do entertain. I do a lot of jokes, but I want you to feel a little in danger along the way. That's why when Joe or Theo invite Trump onto their shows and have a relaxed conversation that subtly promotes him and discredits the Democrats, it has the ability to swing the polls in Trump's favor because the millions of people watching who trust these comedians will subconsciously take on their beliefs and remember parts of the conversation. We had the greatest economy 
in history. Never has there been an economy like And you this. attribute that to lowering taxes yeah, a lot and of tariffs? It, two things. And also, I cut regulations more than anybody else. She's the worst vice president ever. He's the worst president ever. A deadly combination. And we have a country where the borders are bad, where the world is blowing up. You look at Israel, you look at Ukraine, you look at all the different things that are happening. Oh, we're, yeah. She is, and she has no clue. And you know what I, I say about her? Why don't you do it? You know, she complains about everything. She's been there for three and a half years. Why don't you do it? All you have to do is say, why don't you do it? Why didn't you fix it? They have the expertise to allow the conversation to flow and make Trump look like a regular person who genuinely wants what is best for America. I was blessed with great land. Idaho for a potato, right? Yeah. But these, they're, they're just, by the way, you know, some land is good for a potato, some land is good for corn. It's the craziest thing. I love the farmers. They're great. They're the greatest. And by the way, they're getting killed right now. They are. They're getting killed because of this stupid administration. Which is a bigger problem in our country, would you say? Opioids. Opi uh, bigger than alcohol. Oh, for sure. I think it's that's one of the biggest problems. And like, compare that to fentanyl? Oh, yeah. Well, that's the problem is people are making fake opioids because they can't afford real ones or they're just getting them off the street and right. then they put fentanyl in them. Yeah. Um, Fentanyl's like laced into everything now. It's horrible. It's horrible, yeah. Even Andrew Schultz and his crew, who you can argue are internet celebrities rather than traditional comedians, used their flagrant podcast to promote Trump and make him appeal as a regular cool guy. We said you're a great father up top. First thing you say is I've got great kids. You didn't take credit. And then your entire answer, and I thought this was really cool, your entire answer is about how great your kids are. That was a very cool Thank thing. Thank you. That's yeah. very nice. I think I like this interview. I think <laughs> so when you add up all of these comedians' audiences, you can easily see how they have the collective power to swing entire elections if they all promote the same presidential candidate. We'll find out the true effectiveness of this by the end of November. And I also think if you're any sort of a normal person, if just somebody came walking up to you with a clipboard like, hey, uh, who are you voting for president? You'd be like, hey, uh, none of your f***ing business. And you just walk away. When you consider these comedians' Hollywood backgrounds, their natural understanding of politics makes sense. They've had to climb through the ranks of show business, navigate different power structures, and come out on top. So it's no surprise they have a deeper understanding of politics than most could imagine. Our government should be a part of our community, you know, and that we should think about it that way instead of thinking of it as, as, as this overlord mm -hmm. that decides and designates where our money should go, that maybe we should have some more say in it. It's a comedian's job to work within the gray areas and find humor. That's why when they have a unique and interesting take on politics, they make a joke that not only makes people laugh, but also gets them thinking. He's what I call an honest liar. Well, I'm not joking right now. He's an honest liar. That first debate, that first debate, I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen a white male billionaire screaming at the top of his lungs. This whole system is rigged. He said, I know the system is rigged because I use it. I said, God damn. <laughs> And then he pulled out an Illuminati membership card, chopped a lot of cocaine up, and he had to the Take, for example, when I saw this Dave Chappelle clip and thought, Trump must not be so bad then. He seems different to other politicians. Now, maybe I'm just being an idiot for not being educated on politics, but looking back on it, am I really the only person who's being subconsciously influenced by the jokes we consume? I mean, Dave's full 2022 SNL monologue got millions of views, not to mention all the short clips taken from it. So it's likely that this passive pro-Trump stance could win Trump quite a few votes. So in reality, comedy can influence society much more than we think. And some comedians know this and take advantage of it. That's why I like Republicans better than Democrats, because they just, they, I, I know they don't like me. I know that they don't want me in their neighborhood. They're pushing people with wheelchairs down the stairs. Get out of here! God made this for me! All of you, beat it! So it's unlikely the link between comedy and politics will ever break. And if we look back in history, this has been going on since the 17th century in France, where it was stated by Moliere, the French equivalent of Shakespeare, that the duty of comedy is to correct men by amusing them. Whilst some comedians like to influence politics and push their political views on their followers, others take it to the complete next level. Some of you may recognize the guy on the left, and if any of you thought this was the Ukrainian president, Zelensky, then you were right. If you don't know, he was actually a comedian for his whole life, who used to do many comedy sketches where he acted as a president. Vasily Petrovich Goloborodka? Yes. Good morning, Mr. President. 
This shows the distinction between comedy and politics is a lot less obvious than you thought, and it's likely that for this very reason, your political decisions have been affected by the comedy you watch without you even realizing. And when comedians include politics in their work, they can benefit in three main ways. Firstly, since the battle for people's attention is greater than ever, by including political satire in their sketches, this allows comedians to capture the attention of white audiences, whilst having a constant supply of jokes. Joe Biden is 96 motherfucking years old, bitch. You gave Paul Paul the job, bitch. You gave great granddad the job, bitch. Now you want Big Daddy to get his shit together. There is also no surprise that with a president that has a distinct style like this... What a great show this could be instead. We've got an absolute idiot here running the show. I was asked to speak at this hotel. It turns out there's some type of pussy banquet going on. That comedians are having a field day. There may never be such controversial presidential candidates like this again. And after all, these great Trump impersonations from Shane Gillis helped recover his career after his SNL firing. Donald Trump would be the funniest one to see get shot. Just because he'd be in the middle of a speech talking shit. Just, You're gay. <laughs> The shooter would be coming at him and be like, sit down, get down. <laughs> what a loser, get down, sit down. <laughs> but just the noise he would make when he got a hit. Even if he loved Donald Trump, it would be funny. As soon as he got a hit, he'd be like, eh. <laughs> Even Bill Burr, a comedian with his unique style of comedy, never fails to mention the political situation. Dude, the star of a reality show is going to run the country. The guy who decided if Brett Michaels or, or Cindy Lauper would make a better CEO for a company that doesn't exist. <laughs> Trump and Biden are by far the most controversial presidents in a very long time, and people still reference Trump jokes from 2016. In the future, all these jokes about the two will be remembered as part of the Trump-Biden era forever. Donald Trump said that if he fought Joe Biden, Joe Biden would go down fast and hard. <laughs> So it's safe to say the comedians get great material out of politics. This great material attracts more attention, which, whether good or bad, will elevate these comedians' financial status to levels beyond their wildest dreams. And as we saw in 2019 when Joe brought on Bernie Sanders and Andrew Yang, two presidential candidates. His podcast was attacked by the mainstream media for some of the older episodes. And after all was said and done, one thing stuck with Joe. I gained two million subscribers during that time. Like, the podcast never got bigger. It just kept kept growing and growing. It, it had never been bigger than it had been, like, at the end of all of it. It just made it bigger. When comedians like Theo Vaughn and Joe Rogan bring Trump or other big politicians onto their podcasts, their views explode to 100 million in a week or over 20 million in a day. But it's not just about the views. Behind the scenes, these comedians are landing massive sponsorships and unlocking new business opportunities that most people don't even see. For example, if you saw Theo's Trump interview, then you'll remember he had some ads that were totally out of the ordinary for him. Election day is coming up on November 5th, and there's this really cool website, sendthevote.com, that makes it easy to register to vote. AI might be the most important new computer technology ever. It's storming every industry, and literally billions of dollars are being invested. In shows, when big political names show up, so do the big bucks. On top of great material and substantial financial rewards, comedians get access to politically powerful people they would never be able to reach on their own when they bring politicians on their shows. This is exactly how Theo Vaughn got J.D. Vance on his podcast a month after his Trump interview. J.D. Vance has a tech background and connections to very powerful people in Silicon Valley, such as Steve Chase, who co-founded AOL. So in summary, if a comedian can include politics or political jokes in their content, then they will get great material, loads of profits, and connections to very powerful people. So the comedians of today are actually shaping people's political views and profiting at the same time. Normally I don't make my political beliefs a known thing. It's divisive for a comedian to do that, but just know I sleep well at night knowing who I'm voting for. So it turns out comedians are influencing politics because it's a natural element of comedy and a great usage of their massive audiences. They can profit, 
produce great content and get well connected from it, so it's unlikely this will ever stop. Especially since this has been going on since the 17th century. In the future, comedians will likely increase their relations in politics as they continue to grow their audiences and their desire for money. Now to watch more about your favorite comedians, click here.